uh, Conservative Hungarian leader Viktor Orban led his party to a fourth consecutive landslide victory on Sunday. Mr Orban's party, Fidesz, defeated a six-party opposition coalition and won 53.1% of the vote, with 98% of votes counted. Translates to 135 seats in the Hungarian parliament, which is a two-thirds majority. The prime minister said, we won a victory so big that you can see it from the moon and you can certainly see it from Brussels. Join me now from Budapest to discuss this. John O'Sullivan uh, was once a senior advisor to Margaret Thatcher when she was in Downing Street. He's now president of the Danube Institute. It's a think tank that's based in Hungary. John O'Sullivan, thanks so much for your time. Um, what are people here to make of what's happened where you are? It's not really a big surprise, but it is a surprise. We, I think generally most observers expected him to win, uh, Orban to win, Fidesz to win. Why? Well, fundamentally, in the last sort of uh, 12 years he's been in power, the economy has generally improved. Secondly, the government has been uh, quite a good government in an old-fashioned sense that there isn't a constant atmosphere of crisis uh, and, and anxiety. Problems have arise, they're, they're dealt with sometimes successfully, sometimes less so, but nonetheless they're dealt with, the country moves on. Um, on the policies that were controversial in the past, namely over migration, uh, and secondly, over the, the policy of spending a great deal of public money and putting effort into encouraging Hungarians to have children, to establish families. Uh, those policies, um, generally, they're very hard policies to pull off successfully, but you have to say that they're spending about 6% of GDP on family encouragement, really. And that seems to be going reasonably well, early days yet. Mm. So all in all, it wasn't a surprise, but the war, I think, made it more of a surprise because um, it could have uh, the influence of the war on the election. Uh, some people thought that it, it would Orban's re-election. But the fact was, he seems to have caught the public mood. The public mood here is very different from that, say, in Poland, where there's a passionate support for Ukraine. Here, there is much more a feeling of anxiety. We don't want to get involved in the war. Um, that's, that's the truth of the matter. He caught that mood, he intensified it, and that gave him, I think, the supermajority that he's got. That's interesting, because, I mean, you, he's taken in, Hungary's taken in half a million refugees, so it's not as if they're, they're, they're uninvolved. Um, he's also condemned uh, the, the invasion. I mean, there are those people in the West who feel he's still been much too close uh, to the Putin regime. And yet we still end up with a headline like this in The Guardian. Uh, Orban's victory in Hungary adds to the darkness engulfing Europe. Um, for some people, he will, Orban will continue being a sort of panto villain. You're quite right about that. Now, um, what is, uh, how do we balance this? The answer is, of course, that yes, the Hungarian government has formally condemned the uh, Russian invasion. It's also gone along with all of the NATO and EU sanctions, really, for the last three or four years. Um, it has not, however, expressed as passionately as the Poles have done, and even the Czechs and, and the Slovaks, the anger towards uh, Putin. And uh, Orban and his government would say they're acting prudently, they want to stay out, they don't want to give false impressions of being drawn into the war. But nonetheless, that's created a difficulty for the Hungarians in with the other nations of Central Europe, because they have, in a sense, wanted a more passionate denunciation of um, of uh, 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 Putin and the Russians. And I think now we're bound to see a slight shift in the future because the, um, the, the Visegrad Four, the Central European countries, they are very important to Hungarians uh, and in foreign policy. The Hungarians regard the Visegrad as the basis for a strong position in the rest of Europe. And that's not just a political defense or economic cooperation. Um, they want to get people to see Central Europe as, so to speak, a civilizational unit. And I think for that reason, they're going to move more to taken 
Uh, as, and also, of course, as you say, they've taken in an enormous number of refugees, and, and as you... well, second to the Poles. And yeah. that, I think, is an expression of their concern, which they'll want to play up. Uh, very keen to talk on another occasion, because we're out of time now, John O'Sullivan, about the pro-natalist policies you describe. It's worth noting to our viewers, if you are, I think, a, a mother of four in uh, Hungary, you pay no income tax. No other state uh, in the Western world has gone further to encourage its people to have kids, an increasingly unfashionable idea in many parts of the West. John O'Sullivan, really appreciate your time. We'll talk to you again soon, I hope. But for now, thank you.